Today, I'm going to teach you how mirrors are made. I'm going to take you through the history of mirrors, the manufacturing process, and the scientific properties of glass and mirrors. Hi, I'm Sydney with Two Way Mirrors. Every week, we bring you new content based on our expertise in the glass and mirror manufacturing industry. To discover how mirrors are made, let's take a trip back to the beginning, about 8,000 BC to be exact. Back before factories and modern day glass production were even thought of, people saw their reflections in rivers and streams. The image might have been a little distorted from water movement, but I'm sure they didn't mind. The earliest known date of a physical mirror that people could hold in their hands was 8000 BC using obsidian stone. Obsidian is produced by active volcanoes and was first used in Kenya for pottery and arrowheads. People would heavily polish the stone, which resulted in a beautiful reflection, making it the world's first mirror. Over the years, it's become increasingly associated with black magic and is known as a scrying mirror or black mirror, not to be confused with the TV show. The issue with obsidian mirrors is that they were really heavy, so they usually weren't made on a large scale. They were mainly used as smaller decorations by the wealthy, unless you were royalty. Mirrors made out of bronze started to come around in 2000 BC in China and then 2900 BC in Egypt. These mirrors weren't anything fancy, just pieces of bronze that were flattened into round discs, then polished. They typically had handles made of wood, metal, or ivory. Much like the obsidian mirrors, these were usually made on the smaller side, unless you were very wealthy. This can be seen in Egypt with the Lighthouse of Alexandria in 280 BC. There was a large curved mirror at the center that would reflect fire onto a beam. This would help guide those at sea back to safety at night. Money might not buy happiness, but it does buy lighthouses with fancy mirrors. Have you ever heard the story of the famous mathematician Archimedes using mirrors to burn down enemy ships? This was back in 212 BC when photo evidence clearly wasn't invented yet, so who can say for sure? The legend has it that he set up a hexagonal mirror surrounded by other small mirrors to reflect sun rays onto Roman ships. The show Mythbusters actually recreated this scenario and it worked. There's scientific debate over the situation and the votes are split. What do you think? Did Archimedes use a mirror to take down enemy ships, or was there another method he could have used? Let me know in the comments. All right, now let's fast forward a few thousand years. Picture this, 15th to 16th century Italy. Well, to be specific, we're talking about the island of Murano in Venice. This is where the Venetian mirror originated. They were known as Murano glass mirrors. These mirrors were considered to be the best of their kind and definitely weren't cheap. While these mirrors were made with glass plates, they were also made with mercury. Rather than using silver or aluminum like we do now, mirrors back then had a mercury coating to give them their reflective quality. Today we know that mercury is a dangerous substance and shouldn't be used too frequently as it is toxic. So I appreciate the forward thinking on their end, but I'm super thankful that we have other means of making mirrors now. Okay, now we're jumping to the 1700s. Rather than mirrors being used for vanity purposes or burning down ships, they're starting to be used for science. In the 1700s, a mirror was used in the first reflective telescope, but it was still viewed as a luxury item. If you're still with me, let's head to the 1800s. This is where we start to see mirrors that are more like the modern day mirror. In 1835, Hustus von Liebig started using silver instead of mercury to coat the glass, thus creating the silvering process that we still use today. Glass itself is not very reflective, which is why the silvering is needed. Being a fairly sturdy material that is easily polished and smoothed makes it the perfect choice for mirror making. Unless you're going with an acrylic mirror, but that's a topic for a different video. Glass sheets are made from silica, which can be mined or refined from sand. When the glass is made from natural crystals of silica, it is known as fused quartz. However, if it's a synthetic glass, then it's going to be synthetic fused silica. The silica or quartz is melted to an extremely high temperature where it is then poured or rolled into sheets. Silver is boiled down to a liquid and then applied in a thin, even coating to the glass. The liquid silver could also be sprayed on, depending on what tools are available. After the silvering process, the mirrors are covered in a protective coating to avoid chips in the reflection and then polished. If the mirror polishing process isn't done correctly, there could be waves in the glass, which would cause distortion. Old silverback mirrors often have dark lines behind the glass, because the material was coated very thinly and unevenly, causing it to flake off, scratch, or tarnish. Distorted mirrors are okay for fun houses, but not for everyday use. Modern mirrors use aluminum rather than silver. The aluminum is applied via vacuum and will bond directly to cooled glass. Aluminum can oxidize, but a protective layer such as paint can be applied to prevent oxidation. Aluminum actually has the highest level of reflection out of any other metal in the ultraviolet and infrared spectral ranges. 
Front surface mirrors, also known as first surface mirrors, are coated in a multi-layer automatic coater. This helps to ensure that everything is perfectly even, resulting in a flawless reflection. With a standard mirror, the reflection is from the back side, whereas with a first surface mirror, the coating is on the face of the glass. As a result, it has no double image, giving a true reflection. After the aluminum layer is applied, the dielectric layer is applied to prevent oxidation and scratching and further enhance the reflection for specific wavelengths. Once this is done, a laminate layer is applied as protection during the shipping process. I'm going to leave you a ton of information about this in the description below and check out our website, twowaymirrors.com. These mirrors have the highest quality control provided, ensuring that the mirror is flawless. First surface mirrors can be used for engineering and science applications such as barcode scanners, robotics, and lasers. For science and engineering, a superior quality mirror is needed with a precise reflection. For scientific grade mirrors, there's usually another chemical component added to strengthen the glass. For example, borosilicate glass is composed of silica and boron, which helps it withstand high temperatures. Throughout history, from 8000 BC to present day, mirrors have held an important role in society. Originally used by the rich as a status symbol to now, where mirrors are a commodity item for the masses and even used in advanced technology and teleprompters. The mirror making process has transformed from obsidian glass to bronze to toxic mercury, silver, and aluminum. Phew, what a ride. That is all we have for you guys today on mirror making. Thank you guys so much for going on this adventure through time with me. If you enjoyed this video, drop a comment below and tell me your favorite part. Or if you wanna see more educational content, hit that subscribe button right now so you can tune in with us next week. Until next time, I'm Sydney with Two Way Mirrors and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can stay in touch with me. And now a message from our sponsors, us. A lot of you have been asking how we do our videos, so I'm gonna take you behind the scenes into our studio. Right now, I'm standing in front of a chroma key backdrop, also known as a green screen. I'm recording through a teleprompter, which allows me to carefully research and script all of my lines in advance. The green screen makes it easy to add all cool visuals later during the editing process. A teleprompter is simply a beam splitter mirror that displays my script in front of the camera. It allows me to see my lines directly in front of the camera lens so I can read through the script effortlessly while making direct eye contact with you, the audience. The magic is in the transparent mirror, which provides tint-free visibility for my camera to record through. And there's no double image with the text, so reading it is a breeze. Hi, I'm Sydney, videographer, mirror geek, and basically a jack of all trades. I wrote this guide so you can streamline your own videos and speak with more confidence. A professional teleprompter is very easy to make if you know how. I'll leave you all the details below on the simple parts you'll need to make a professional teleprompter using our beam splitter glass. I'll also leave you a link to our free voice activated software, which scrolls automatically while you talk. Good luck and happy recording.